Hi, good morning from me, Red One here in Bangkok. I'm uh, giving you a bit of a background here, as you know, in the warehouse management system. If you read through it, I'm saying that it's a bit mess up with the core. A lot of touching um, in the core code and a lot of wrapping and uh, refactoring and it's really a mess because there's even no documentation so as I said I'm abandoning all uh, previous work of Libero and his forks and writing things from scratch and I've started with the inbound delivery schedule which is much easier because it's all in my mind that I design it out, I document it out well, put movies and tutorials. And now after some month or so of thinking of how to put in the WMS new design, I'm using the Magic Red One Ninja together with an Excel spreadsheet. Now, even the spreadsheet, if you see my previous uh, uh, modules, um, videos, you will see that I can even define the Magic plugin itself. Here's the header, WMS. Underneath, I define all the models. And you can see, on the warehouse, you have these new um, models, dimension, root location, and gate. And the locator, which is a sub of warehouse, you have furthermore sub uh, windows, empty storage, product type, handling unit, delivery schedule. And these are all its properties. And here are sample data. And as you see, uh, locators, it's usually zero, zero, zero. It will mean the whole warehouse. And you define it. You will say one, one, and the first floor will be this. But I put double zero behind because uh, I want to take care of quants and also sub uh, bin uh, locations or package or where you have more units in the pack in the, in the proper container. And if you were to leave zero at the last level, for all the floors of the particular bin and the particular arm, it will mean a section. And you should put it 3-1 or 3 one zero to make it very clear. And 32, 33 section. And if you leave the aisle and bin empty, it's just an aisle, then it means the whole aisle, like 1, 2, 3, 4, the whole aisle and all the floors with an aisle. And then when you begin to define your uh, preferred product, you can then assign them to the locators, right? Storage type, there'll be storage that are hazardous, slow, low testing, and so forth. And you could easily just add information if you want, right? So um, here, in this case, um, I'm doubling um, between location and also XYZ. In fact, um, they will populate each other. Uh, this is a redundancy, but it's more for visibility of the user because the user will be very quickly understand once you know which warehouse it is, let me put. Hmm. Okay, is the HQ warehouse, for example, or HQ transit? Yeah. Immediately, they uh, can know that it's the second aisle, third uh, bin, and um, it's the whole section that is slow. All right, and you have already covered preferred product. And so these are all the information that we can define exactly into the Excel, make it very visible. Accountants, users, implementers can easily look at it. And you can match and match things you don't like. This is an info window I've not tested. The code to take it properly, I will just delete it out. And so with this structure, let me export this out into the zip. You can refer to older tutorials that will explain all this in more detail and slower step by step. Here I'm just quickly introducing the new model and now just go into your newly um, exported CSV. Just we're going to do the ninja part of the design. So we have to clear off this uh, suffix dash table space one and then zip them up and very quickly we are ready to roll. Compress them, go to your ninja plugin. Uh, I was testing something, let me, you can easily 
delete everything very quickly. Of course, you can update them, if you see in the previous modules, but here I'm starting from scratch. So, I will clear off everything. Okay, and here, everything from scratch, and you go to a blank instance and reattach. So I was testing it just now, I hit an error. I think I've solved it, so I'm back here. Very quickly, you can just do this, and it should be over in a few seconds. Oh yeah, I was doing uh, debugging, so let's see if it works. Seems to work, <clears throat> yes, and you can then go to the fourth. You see this has been created or imported all your models uh, and even the code maker, right? So I'm not going to test the code maker yet, getting the setters and getters. I will just delete this off. You can refer, uh, like I said, to the Excel to be very quickly, understand what it's doing. It's trying to create processes, uh, these parameters, and setters and getters for the other new models. But I'm interested in importing this in, see how quickly and visible things are. So just run for the models. Everything seems to be okay. Okay, just run it. Right. Now it's running for everybody. All the models, sub-models. And it will take them a bit longer because you're having more... Oh, I'm hitting some error somewhere. Is it an error? Yes, there seems to be a dot somewhere, column X, Y, Z. So, see, there's an error somewhere I put a dot. Here it is. This is a error. So, you see, you can easily do this, export again. Or actually, you can do a global search easily. So this is a demonstration of how very fast you can have very low skill, but high subject matter, expert. Okay, let's do a dot, Z. Not found. Not found. So, see how fast um, we can do things. So we can get back to here. A bit of a hassle, but something that low technical skill, but high domain experts could work with, play with it into the night, not disturbing the developer team. This is really separation of powers, this uh, revolutionary killer in developer scalability that I've discovered. I'm gonna get a Nobel Prize for this, I'm sure. So let's compress again and you see how fast we could it all goes through but I'm rejecting all of them. Oh you could you could update them if you want, but I'm going to, in order to um, update them, uh, uh, what we do is that you just put a, um, put an update uh, comment here. If you want them to be updated, in this case, I've deleted them, I'm not updating them, and now I'm re, Attaching the archive and uh, let's do it one more time. Oh, yes, you could also import it from the test sub tab level. And uh, let's go to the next one. You see, they are all out. Uh, I'm not doing the code maker like I said, but I very easily control them by either removing them or making them inactive. So the X, Y, Z should be correct. Let's do a man. Uh, come here, change module again. It should work this time. 
But if it does not, like I said, you can very easily, very quickly play to and fro. So they've been created and uh, you can now log in to see the new wealth management module model. At least the data model has been designed. So if you want to go under the warehouse, like shown in the Excel earlier, you could uh, wait for it to come up. You could easily see that uh, you will have under the warehouse what right? three sub tab and under the, the locator with the sub tab you have further storage. So we go to here. Uh, so here you are storage storage type empty storage, and as you call up the locator. Um, the storage does not appear, so what you do, very quickly, I'll show you. This is something of a snack, but uh, because there are multiple parents, uh, is due to the uh, sequencing. I'll sort that in code, but I'm not going to do it right now, because manually, you could understand better if I will show you that, for example, the warehouse. And if you were to go to the tab, put them on uh, grid mode, get them to its uh, sequencing and let's put the uh, sequencing up all right put the sequencing up here and you will see what I mean so um, uh, you could refer to this easily that um, under a uh, locator, you have storage type, prefer product, and empty storage under locator. So, where is the locator? Under locator is 20. So, you go to your storage type, put 21, uh, and then uh, prefer product and empty storage, 22. And 23. So this should be uh, 24. As you can see, is the sub tab level 3 is a child of um, empty storage and the grandchild of the locator. So with that done, let's go back and everything should be out in order. If not, um, you still have to play with it, but I've tested it out. Everything came out working beautifully. So this is basically showing you how quickly we could do um, a complete subject matter design that is very visible to the end user and very quickly. Here you are. So if you go to empty storage, you will see the empty storage lines up there. Okay, then that's all from me very quickly. I don't make this a long movie, but um, you can now examine um, how things can be very quickly defined in an Excel spreadsheet using the Ninja plugin. Uh, all things are very visible and you can refer to my uh, notes online for all information. Thank you and have a good